Hello and welcome to this video. Designing and analyzing engineering products may require a variety of different types of analyses such as nonlinear static or linear dynamic analysis on the same system. If we have a model already prepared for a nonlinear analysis, can we use it directly for a linear dynamic analysis? Also, in many engineering applications, the dynamic behavior of a structure based on a prior linear or nonlinear status may be of interest. To understand this, let's consider the example of tuning a guitar string, where the tension in the strings is adjusted to change its frequency, as well as the rotating blades of a fan, where it deforms under centrifugal force, and even an assembly of a structure with multiple parts and various degrees of contact. Although we know that a linear dynamic analysis is linear, what should we do if the model contains nonlinearities? Do we need to change the numerical model? How will the numerical model and nonlinear properties be treated in the linear dynamic analysis? In this lesson, we'll explore the answer to these questions in more detail and investigate the ways to include nonlinearities in the linear dynamic analysis. We begin with a brief lecture and we move on to a workshop demonstration of electronics enclosure. Ready? Let's get started. In designing and analyzing a product, we may need to perform different types of analyses for the same system. For instance, let's consider the example of an engine valve cover assembly, which is used to protect the engine's valve train, all while preventing lubricating oil from leaking out. To ensure its reliability, a nonlinear static analysis of the valve cover gasket or O-ring is performed initially to determine that no leakage occurs. Bolts are tensioned appropriately, similar to what's shown here, to compress the gasket or seal sufficiently. The valve cover will see constant vibrations from the engine, so dynamic response may need to be investigated. Preventing resonance, which could lead to unwanted fatigue and noise, is key. In this case, we can use a model set up as nonlinear stack analysis and subsequent modal and harmonic analyses. Understanding how a model set up for one analysis will behave in another analysis is important as we may not wish to develop two or more different numerical models of different types for different analyses. Before we examine how nonlinear properties are treated in linear dynamics, let's first understand the assumptions related to linear dynamics. Many dynamics problems can be solved in the frequency domain instead of the time domain. The study of frequency domain-based dynamics is called linear dynamics. As the name suggests, linear dynamics does not permit direct inclusion of nonlinearities in the solution. It is a computationally efficient method of solving dynamic problems, which provides solution information in the frequency domain. Some of the assumptions related to linear dynamics are, it's based on small deflection theory, which assumes that the displacements are small enough that the resulting stiffness changes are insignificant. The amplitude of vibrations assumed to be small. The area of contact is fixed, which means that contact is either bonded or sliding no separation only, as in these contacts, the contact in area doesn't change. Vibration of parts coming in and out of contact is not possible in linear dynamics. The material responds in a linear manner such that the displacement is directly proportional to the applied force. If these assumptions do not hold true for a given analysis, then one needs to perform a more computationally expensive nonlinear transient analysis. Now that we've come to know about the assumptions in linear dynamics, let's find out how we can utilize a model containing nonlinearities in a linear dynamic analysis. There are two approaches. The first approach is utilizing the model directly, which ignores any nonlinear effects. For the second approach, we analyze the model using linear perturbation about a nonlinear base analysis. Linear perturbation is a linear analysis with nonlinear pre-stress effects included. In this case, the pre-stress state of the model is captured prior to conducting a dynamic analysis of it. This pre-stress state of the model is based on the status at the end of the nonlinear base analysis. So what this means is you first run the nonlinear stack analysis, the base analysis, and then the follow-on linked modal analysis. Although the reference configuration for the linear dynamic analysis is based upon the nonlinear results, we should keep in mind that the dynamic analysis is a linear perturbation or small variation about this base state. Further details on the linear perturbation method can be found in the ANSYS innovation course titled Performing Pre-Stress Modal Analysis. 
Let's now look at the different types of nonlinearities that can be present in the base static model and how they are handled in the linear dynamic analysis in both approaches mentioned prior. First type of nonlinearity that we'll discuss is the contact nonlinearity, which exists when a part comes into or goes out of contact with another part. For the case of the direct modal analysis, the initial contact status is evaluated. It's useful to insert a contact tool and contour the initial contact status to check. The status will indicate far, near, sliding, or sticking behavior, and we can use this to understand how the region of the contact will be treated in the linear dynamic solution. If a nonlinear contact, such as frictionless or frictional, is present, then we do not need to change it to a linear contact before conducting a linear dynamic analysis as long as we understand how these nonlinear contact behaviors are treated in the modal analysis. The pinball region of the contact plays a role in how the contact is treated. The pinball region is set in the details. A deeper discussion on the pinball region can be found in the course titled How to Set Up and Solve an Interference Fit Using ANSYS Mechanical. Now, if the distance between the contact and target is larger than the pinball region, then the contact status will report far. If it is less than the pinball region but not touching, the status will report near. And if it's touching, the status will report sliding or sticking depending on the contact specified and frictional settings. Now, if the contact status is sliding or sticking, rough and frictional contact with mu greater than zero get converted to bonded contact, and frictionless becomes no separation. If the status is near or far, then all three nonlinear contacts are ignored. They'll be considered open throughout the solution, resulting in free motion in both the normal and tangential directions. Keep in mind that this behavior can vary along the contact, accounting for localized regions where the contact status changes. For the case of linear perturbation about a nonlinear base state, which we can also call pre-stress modal, the above holds true with one distinction. In this case, the contact status from the base analysis not the initial contact status, is used to determine how the contact will behave following the same rules. In other words, we run a nonlinear stack analysis first, then the calculated contacting area from the analysis is used for the modal analysis. We can also alter the behavior of the contact in the definition of the pre-stress environment. The different contact status available for the modal analysis are true status, which uses the current contact status from the static analysis in the modal analysis. For sticking, for the contacts that are in the closed status, sticking or sliding, the frictional contacts with the coefficient of friction greater than zero will be treated as bonded, but frictionless contacts will be treated as no separation. And force bonded, where all frictional and frictionless contacts in the closed status, sticking or sliding, are treated as bonded. So with these options, we can easily evaluate different scenarios without changing the contact setup. This can allow us to obtain a better understanding of how the contact affects the linear dynamics and the associated sensitivities. For example, newly assembled dry parts may be assumed to stick, but then what if a lubricant gets into the interface and they can slide? How much will the dynamics change? So contact was the first nonlinearity we considered. The second nonlinearity to consider is the material nonlinearity and how it's utilized in the linear dynamic solution. For metals, when the stress exceeds the elastic limit, plastic strain occurs. Solving the model directly with plasticity, only the stiffness near the origin, which is the linear portion of the stress strain curve, is used. The plasticity is ignored. Whereas for hyperelasticity or hyperelastic materials such as rubber or elastomers, a linear relationship between stress and strain does not exist. Since the stiffness changes depending on the mode and extent of the deformation, there is no unique stiffness such as the elastic modules. To carry out a modal analysis directly with hyperelasticity, one must switch the hyperelastic material with a linear elastic material. Alternatively, we can solve a nonlinear static analysis first, then perform a modal analysis which we call pre-stress modal, like was mentioned prior with contact. In this method, the hyperelastic material is considered at a certain stress state where the solver computes the tangent stiffness from that point on the stress strain curve. 
Since linear dynamics is based on small deformations, the assumption to ignore the nonlinearities of the hyperelastic material is appropriate. But we are still capturing the tangent stiffness of the stressed material. The last type of nonlinearity for the consideration in a linear dynamic analysis is the geometric nonlinearity, which is introduced due to the effects such as large deflection, large rotation, and stiffening caused by stresses in the body. It is possible to link a static analysis to a modal analysis to include the pre-stress effects, including these geometric nonlinearities. If pre-stress effects are not included in the modal analysis pre-stress environment, the undeformed geometry is considered for the analysis. Turning on large deflection in the base static analysis, followed by defining the base analysis in the pre-stress environment, accounts for this geometric nonlinearity effect in the linear perturbation method. Let's look at our workshop model now. For this workshop, we'll use a box enclosure used to house electronics as an example. This sort of box enclosure for electronics is prevalent in homes and in industry. In this case, it's composed of an insulating material such as plastic or PET. The lid of the housing box is fastened to it using four preloaded bolts at the corners. We'll see that preloading slightly deforms the lid and the box causing slight gaps to form between them. This in turn affects how the contact will behave in the linear dynamic modal analysis. The bottom of the housing box is fixed at the four locations. The goal of this workshop example is to examine the effects of contacts and nonlinearities on linear dynamics by going through three different simple setups. Let's begin by opening the Archive Project box enclosure in ANSYS Workbench. A static structural system with engineering data, geometry, and boundary conditions defined has already been created. Double click on model cell to open ANSYS Mechanical. Change the units to millimeter, kilogram, newton, second. Click on geometry branch and see that we have two geometries, lid and housing, both of which are assigned plastic PET which can be checked in material assignment. In the connections branch, we will see the four beam connections that are already created, which represent the bolts at the four corners. The mesh is already generated for this model. And if we click on mesh branch of the tree outline, we can see that the element size used here is five millimeters. Click on the static structural branch. In the analysis settings and step control, the number of steps is set to two, and in the solver controls, large deflection is turned on. Click on Fixed Support to visualize how the housing is fixed at the four corners. To account for preloading at the bolts, we have included bolt pretension for all the four bolts. The magnitude of the preload is 500 newtons, as can be seen from the tabular data. In the first analysis step, we pretension the bolts. In the second step, we lock the bolts. To learn more about bolt pretensions, please see the ANSYS Innovation course titled Modeling the Bolt and Preload. Let's now set up the first case. Click on the contacts and select the contact region. Change the type of contact from bonded to frictionless. Let's solve the model. Right-click on Solution, Insert Contact Tool. Right-click on Contact Tool and select Evaluate All Results. Expand the Contact Tool branch by clicking on the plus symbol. Click on Status. As we can see, the contact status shown here is either sliding or near. This is because frictionless contact is used between the lid and housing. In the Home tab, pick Analysis, then Modal. Click on Pre-Stress, then choose Static Structural. The contact status is kept as True Status, which is the default option. Supports are not needed to be added in the modal solution since they are already defined in the static analysis. In analysis settings, change the max modes defined to 60. Solve the model. Left click on the tabular data as shown. Right click and pick Create Mode Shape Results. Right click and evaluate all results. From the tabular data, notice that the lowest frequency obtained is 108 Hz. Click on the fourth mode and go to Results tab and set the display scale to 0.5 auto. Animate the results to see the mode shape. Notice the box sliding on the lid as expected. This is because we have sliding contact here. Click on the 59th mode 
and animate the results. Notice the lid separating from the box and pulling away in the Y direction. This is because there we have near contact status. Let's now look at a second case. Go back to connections branch and change the contact type between lid and housing to frictional. Specify the coefficient of friction as 0.2. Right mouse click on static structural and hit solve. Click on status and contact tool. It's showing sticking, sliding, and near contact status. The contact status in pre-stress setting of modal is kept unchanged as true status, which is the default option. Solve the model. From the tabular data, notice that the lowest frequency obtained is 117 Hz. Click on the fourth mode and go to results tab, set the display scale to 0.5 auto. To observe the mode shapes, animate the results. In comparison to the previous case, notice how the box moves on the lid slightly. This is because the lid can now only slide in places where the contact status showed sliding. The contact area of sliding and near contact is now reduced as a result of the introduction of sticking contact from the change to frictional contact. Since sticking contact status leads to a bonded behavior in the modal, we see a reduction in sliding between the parts. One important thing to note here is that whenever we have sticking contact status, the behavior is bonded. And whenever we have sliding contact status, the behavior is no separation. Let's now look at the third case. We use the same frictional contact with coefficient of friction as 0.2 between the lid and the housing. Thus, there won't be any change in static structural analysis, and hence the contact status will remain the same. It will have sticking, sliding, and near contact status as before. Now click on pre-stress and modal and change the contact status from true status to force bonded. Solve the model. From the tabular data, notice that the lowest frequency obtained is 122 Hertz. What force bonded does is it makes the sliding contact type to behave as bonded as well. So now the model is bonded everywhere except the locations where we have near contact status. Click on the 39th mode and go to the results tab and set the display scale to 0.5 auto. Animate the results to see the mode shape. Notice the lid pulls away from the box in the positive Y direction at the places where the contact status is near. A comparison table is also provided, which shows the contact type and contact status set by the user in each of the three cases mentioned. The contact tool status obtained is as follows. We can also compare the fourth mode shape of all three cases to get an idea of how the contacts behave in different scenarios. As a note, if we wish to investigate the case of the lid not pulling away from the box, then no separation contact could be specified. The contact status in the static analysis would show sliding for all contacts that were inside the pinball region. The no separation behavior would restrict motion normal to the surface. Similarly, Specifying bonded would result in a sticking contact status for all contacts that were inside the pinball region. The bonded behavior would restrict motion normal and tangential to the surface. So to conclude, we can say that the contact status from the upstream plays a key role and one must verify the appropriate status to get the expected modal response. It's also important to understand that the physical results may vary from the simulation because of the underlying assumptions of linear dynamics. But understanding how the contact changes the dynamic response, one can use the tool to bound the problem. I hope this video has clarified how to solve a linear dynamic problem when the base model has nonlinearities. It's important to understand the contact status before solving the linear dynamic solutions. Also, how the material is treated depending on the solution method is important, whether directly solving the modal analysis versus linear perturbation. Thank you for watching and do check out our other courses to discover more useful learning resources.